Hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome you all to today's webinar titled, It Might Be a Course, What If It Is a Job Aid Instead? This session is being recorded and the archive will be posted to our on-demand recordings page. If you registered through the free events website, um, you will automatically receive an email with a, a link to this recording, and that will be sent out in the next few days or so. So please keep an eye out for that. My name is Lisa Huang, and I'm a program manager here at UCI Division of Continuing Education. Here is a brief outline of what we are going to cover in this webinar session. First, I'll start off with a quick overview of Zoom features so you'll know how to submit questions throughout the presentation. Next, I'll be giving you some information about our e-learning instructional design certificate program, which is a fully online program. I will cover the requirements, fees, and details regarding upcoming courses for our spring quarter, which begins March 28th. I will then turn it over to our guest presenter, Dawn Mahoney. At the end of her presentation today, we will have a brief Q&A session. And then finally, I will leave you with my contact information so that you can send over any additional questions that we didn't address. If you encounter any technical difficulties during the webinar today, please send a chat message over to Billy Rue from UCI DCE, and he will help you troubleshoot any issues. If you have a question for Dawn regarding the content of this presentation, please submit it in the chat panel and we will address it at the end or throughout the presentation. Um, please be sure to send your questions to all panelists and attendees, and that way everyone can see any of your questions and comments. So just to warm the chat up a little bit, um, for those of you who are logged in, please go ahead and send a chat message to everyone, um, introducing yourself, maybe providing your job title, what industry you're in, um, the company, and perhaps maybe what interested you in signing up for this webinar. And hopefully we can get uh, some good dialogue going on over there in the chat panel. And I know that Dawn will be using the chat panel as well throughout her presentation. Here's a brief overview of the e-learning instructional design certificate program. Our program provides the knowledge and skills needed to develop and deliver training online. Taught by industry experts, the program will help you become proficient in all aspects of e-learning, including the design and development of interactive lessons, project management, evaluation and assessment, and more. As a student in the program, you will get hands-on experience with our learning management system, take part in online learning community forums, receive individualized feedback from instructors, and have the opportunity to network and learn from others in the field. Perfect, I see some um, introductions, introductions happening in the chat panel, so please go ahead and continue with those. And welcome to those of you who are just joining us as well. Our program is designed for a number of audiences, individuals who are completely new to e-learning instructional design, training managers and coordinators, HR professionals, and individuals who have taken on a training role within their department. With the strategic switch to remote and online delivery, companies have prioritized e-learning as they recognize the value of training online. In order to be successful in our certificate program, students should be comfortable navigating software applications and learning management systems. The certificate program is composed of six required courses, which add up to 15 units total. To be eligible for the certificate, students must complete all six courses with a letter grade of C or better, as well as a completed declaration of candidacy and request for certificate form. Since there is a small candidacy fee, I usually advise students to take a few courses in the program first before they declare, just to make sure they want to complete the full certificate program. As I mentioned before, our certificate program consists of six online courses. The required courses are listed below. We have principles of e-learning instructional design, exploring e-learning development tools. Students can choose between the intro and beyond basics versions of designing and developing interactive e-learning courses. Project management for e-learning professionals, e-learning evaluation and assessment, and the e-learning instructional design practicum. Each course is 2.5 units and will run for eight weeks online. We highly recommend that students start off with the principles course and follow the sequence of courses as shown on this slide. The curriculum has been developed to flow from one course to the next, so taking courses in the sequence is beneficial. And please note that there is a prerequisite for the practicum course. You must successfully complete all other required courses before enrolling in the practicum. 
And then at the bottom of the slide, I have also listed a supplemental course that may be of interest to you. Creating your online e-learning portfolio is not part of the certificate program requirements, but is a wonderful opportunity to help you advance your career or become better situated for your job search. It is open enrollment, so anyone may enroll even if you are not enrolled in our certificate program. This is a five week long instructor led course that takes participants through the entire process of creating an online portfolio from defining the target audience and picking a tool through creating a polished website to share samples. And enrollment is currently open for this portfolio class. Um, you can enroll if you're interested through the end of this week. It is the winter offering of the class. Um, it is currently in its first week of instruction. So if you are interested, please enroll by this Friday. Our program offers an alternative digital credential or ADC within two courses in our certificate program. Students will have the opportunity to earn an ADC through successful completion of a qualifying assignment within either of the designing and developing interactive e-learning courses in the program. Also referred to as a digital badge, an ADC is a virtual record of specific skills and competencies acquired and provides a verifiable way to share your educational achievement with others via channels like Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Badges help demonstrate your commitment to professional development and help you stand out in a competitive job market. I've included links here if you're interested in learning more about ADCs just in general, um, this specific one in interactive e-learning storyboarding, and I've included the actual badge image on this slide here. So in the upcoming spring 2022 quarter, we are offering the principles course, exploring e-learning development tools, both of the designing and developing interactive e-learning courses. And just as a reminder, you would choose one based on your experience level, and e-learning evaluation and assessment. Each course is listed with its start and end date, as well as the online course fee of $670. And enrollment is currently open for the spring, and students may enroll either online or over the phone by calling our student services office. And we do encourage students to enroll early as classes do tend to fill up quickly. Each required course in our program costs $670, so you're looking at a total of $4,020 in course fees for the six online classes. Now, you don't pay the entire total up front. You would simply pay for each course individually at the time of enrollment. There is also a $125 candidacy fee for the program, so in the end, you're looking at just about $4,145 for the entire program. Please note that amount does not include textbooks, which some courses may require. We do post textbook information on the enrollment page, so you'll know if course materials are required before you enroll in a course. And prior to enrollment in the practicum, students must purchase or otherwise have access to um, and gain working knowledge of an authoring tool such as Articulate 360, Adobe Captivate, or other. So therefore, software may be an additional expense. And I see a, a question in the chat, do the courses have to be in, uh, taken in, an, in any order. So we do recommend that um, new students start with a principal's course in their first quarter, and then they do follow in the sequence um, as shown on the website. I'd like to specifically point out information about a special discount that we offer for the program. We offer 10% off course fees to members of ATD San Diego, Orange County, and Los Angeles chapters. So if you are a member of either of these chapters, please visit the chapter website for more information about the discount. And this slide contains information about the articulation agreement that we have in place with the University of San Diego to provide you a next step on your educational pathway. So after completion of RE Learning Instructional Design Certificate Program with a letter grade of B or better in each course, USD has agreed to accept our coursework as six units toward their fully online Master's in Learning Design and Technology, which is a, again, which is a fully online program. So if you are interested in learning more, please visit the website linked on this slide. And here's a screenshot of our online course schedule, which always has the most up-to-date information. You can enroll in any available courses by clicking the green online button. To be scheduled indicates when particular courses are scheduled to be offered, but enrollment for that quarter just hasn't opened up yet. And as you can see, we don't offer every course every quarter, so you will want to plan accordingly.
All right, at this time, it's my pleasure to introduce our guest presenter, Dawn J. Mahoney. Dawn is a talent development professional who is passionate about de de developing people through better learning content, better learning strategy, and better dialogue. In 2015, Dawn founded Learning in the White Space, a boutique consultancy devoted to planning a learning strategy and bringing it to life. Dawn writes the Last Word column in Training Magazine and is the author of Lean Learning Using the Addy Model and has contributed to several other learning related books, most recently, Talent Development and Training in Healthcare Handbook. We're very excited to have her logged in today to present on the topic, It Might Be a Course, What If It Is a Job Aid Instead? So I'm going to go ahead and hand the remote control over to Dawn um, so that she can further introduce herself and continue on with her presentation. Dawn, can you hear us okay? I can hear you just fine. Thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. Please feel free to take it away. All right. Thanks so much. I'll reach out if I need help. All right. Great. Thank you. Awesome. I'd like to uh, thank those of you that are here uh, live and in person today. And it's nice to know um, people that are uh, friends in real life are here with me. That always feels so good. But I'm also reaching out to those of you that are um, going to be viewing this on the recording. There are several of you, and I want to thank you for doing that as well. Um, I am needy, and I would love it if you would choose to engage with me. We have the chat panel, and we have those emojis, uh, your keyboard emojis, um, but please do feel free to ask questions, comment, suggest. Um, I'm not the smartest person in this Zoom room today, and so your contributions really mean a lot um, and add color and life to what is kind of a one-way presentation without you. So, uh, you know, get ready, get set, and go and do that with me throughout. Um, I also know that multitasking happens, and I don't get to legislate whether you do or don't, but I'm hoping you'll choose to be here with me, um, because again, your input is very valuable to everybody, as are your questions, so um, minimize other windows and turn your cell phone upside down, etc. I'd love to have you with me, so um, I'll kick it off. Thank you. Let's see if I can run the slides for real. Here we go. So um, using the chat pod, go ahead and type in what you think of when you hear the words performance support or the words job aid. I'd love to know what you think they are. And this is where you hear the Jeopardy music in the background. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Hi, Diane. Yeah, quick reference guide. Not considered often enough, great. Wiki, FAQs, simple step-by-step -step guides to accomplish a task, PDFs of reference. Um, Angelica, I'd love to know a little bit more detail on that one. Step-by-step uh, -step instruction on how to do a task within a job. Um, could be paper, could be a video, of course. Extra information or support. Cheat sheets, yep, I've built a career on calling them cheat sheets and building them. I think, a uh, Sarah, so glad you're here. I think of a colorful quick reference that learners can view for a quick review or instruction on a task. Um, job aid is a reference guide that is limited in depth of information. Interesting, Melody, do expand that out for us, um, especially the limited in depth of information piece. Love to know just a little bit more uh, from you. Um, hopefully the rest of you will weigh in. I'd love to hear more ideas. I collect them. I'll be um, grabbing the, the chat if I remember at the end of the session. Um, so I, when I started um, working on this um, a couple years ago, I kind of eclipsed my career of training and development because I'm a, a stand and deliver trainer in a classroom from way back. Um, I found that so much of what I was talking about wasn't um, resonating with people or we were prevent providing really complex uh, manuals and things, but yet they still didn't know what to do or when to do it. So started building things that um, became recipes, so to speak, uh, quick reference guides. You all nailed it. Um, too bad I can't just stop talking about this and let you go on with your day, but I'd like to add a, just a few more comments. Um, instead of SCORM, the learning in the LMS is a one-page PDF serving as a resource point of reference. Okay, great, great. Um, we use job aids every single day of our lives, whether we actually 
think about that or not. Um, this is actually a piece of um, an image I picked up from um, one of the free sources, but it looks just like my Aunt Beattie's handwriting, that black chocolate cake um, writing there. And I actually have some people's um, handwritten recipes, my grandmother and my Aunt Beattie and my mom and so forth. Um, these are sort of primitive sorts of job aids that we've been using. Um, other types of job aids that you think you use, go ahead and populate the chat and I'll refer to them now and then. Uh, Melody, I think of job aids as a quick reference used in the moment at a time of need versus a course or other form of information that give the learner detailed information um, to, perform, uh, to promote learning and competency. Yes, 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 yes. Um, oh, here they come, a list of my password ticklers. Sticky notes, yeah. I, I think the number one tip of the day or the first tip I'll give is um, if you are in an office environment in a company or organization and you are stymied about how to figure out uh, what you should build before you even have meetings with SMEs, you might be really surprised to wander around and see the post-it notes that people have in their offices and for the reasons that they have them. Infographics, great, notepad. I love Google Keep for the same reasons. So performance support is the broader category. Most of us use job aids or cheat sheets, I think in this training and learning industry that we find ourselves in. Um, but really the overall um, umbrella is performance support, but what the heck is it? Um, it's not a new idea. Cave drawings, recipe cards, maps, all these things have been around and it really are job aids when you think about it. And I devised this simplified, pared down um, definition it, that job aids are tools that help people succeed. Because depending on your industry, depending on the reason for the performance support tool, even the methodology or delivery method um, kind of shifts the conversation a little bit. Um, but it's anything that helps people succeed in their work. And that's kind of why we're here, right? Why we earn the paychecks we earn. So that's my simplified definition. But how do we know what they need? So I gave you a tip a minute ago about wandering around and observing people in their work and looking at the post-it notes. Um, I, the, it became really obvious to me the cheat sheets that I needed to create in this scenario I mentioned earlier. Um, Sarah Harris and I used to both work in the credit union uh, industry. And um, I really got it then because we're complex mainframe systems and people would have cheat sheets of codes that they used regularly. And they were often post-it notes or lists um, and they were taking materials that we were very lovingly putting together and uh, distilling them down to just the information um, that they needed most often on a regular basis so that they didn't have to memorize them. But how do you know what the people need? Besides the wandering around in this day and age, we might be remote. And um, if I can get a drum roll, everybody beat on your desk uh, where you are. The answer is we ask them. We ask them. And them is, a changeable or fungible term because it might be different in your role or unique to your organization, but I'll give you just uh, for instance, the people that do the work, that perform the tasks, um, they might be the designated subject matter experts, but I wouldn't say it's always just the subject matter experts. And I say that because sometimes they have forgotten how to be a new person doing the task, a new person in the job, in the role. And um, not everybody is great at remembering what you really need the first day, the second day, the third week on the job. Um, and so it can be subject matter experts, but I think there are more people um, to ask than that. Ask the people that just started who have been there six months, ask them what they would have needed when they started. Lots of conversation has to go into this work that we call training and development, learning and development, instructional design, whatever moniker, uh, learning experience design that wasn't around when I even started this job. Um, whatever you call it, you have to talk to people and you need to ask questions. I, this is like the eclipsing of my career really, and that is that 
we just need to put this out here for the recording and for all time that we need to trust that people know what they want, what they need to be successful. Uh, the mistake we often make is we just don't ask enough questions. We don't ask them what they need. And worse than that, we ask, but we don't actualize any of their um, responses in some way. So um, I'm just gonna put that out there that we work with smart people. And um, I think we forget that we do and that we just need to trust them more. Uh, this is a quote from my dad who is very good about when we're cooking or baking or whatever, when I'm visiting and we need an ingredient or two. Um, but he told me one day, don't give me more than three, um, just verbally, you have to put it on a list because um, I'll forget any more than three. And he's now 85 and I, he has a really sharp memory, but the answer is probably the same today as it ever was. Um, and I think, why do we make people memorize, right? A quick note, people will make their own job aids. I mentioned about the post-it notes. Diane typed it first. Um, and those are important and we'll never not have them. I bet even in this day and age with the amount of passwords we need to know and then uh, how often we have to change them that if you were to walk around an office environment, you will probably find uh, people have post-it notes stuck to the bottom of their keyboards or the bottom of their laptops and things like that. But anyway, again, with the, the trust factor, I just will also add that you want to control the narrative. If people are going to be making their own job aids and they're incorrect, and then they're sharing that information with other people, nobody benefits from that. So ponder the fact that we probably need to give people more performance support than we're uh, currently doing, or we need to raise the level, how often we iterate the performance support tools, how often we update them. Uh, my personal bias is that it should be on uh, your plan and that you should put something in a calendar, you know, at a reasonable um uh, length the time frame where they get looked at again you re-interview people so that in your world might be six months in your world it might be a week new product rollouts might need more information more current information updated more often i remember when i was doing system training uh, mainframe system changes for new systems they had to update us daily sometimes multiple times a day uh, as to updates to the system those are the types of things that we would want to update date on our job aids um, for people. So do keep in mind, but plan to iterate. Uh, why force memorization? I just love to know how many of you remember the things you memorized in school in eighth grade, verbatim and rem remember correctly. Go ahead, let me know. Raise type a raised hand emoji or a thumbs up emoji and let me know. Um, yeah, multiplication tables, I can remember some of them, not all of them. Don't ask me to do the nines or the most of the sevens realistically, partly because I have tools at my fingertips. I don't have to do that anymore, but I can remember the first ones. I was never good at the division tables and some of those things. School of Rock. Oh yeah, that was the best thing. Still, it's needed in Congress today, if I may editorialize. Memorizing, we need people to know things to their core. Asking them to memorize, you're just going to have to memorize it, is kind of um, a daunting prospect to many of our learners. Um, many of us have some aspect of our brain function where memorizing some pieces of information comes as second nature and we just do it easily. And other things that we're asked to memorize, um, you know, forget it. They might as well peel my eyelids off or something. <laughs> it's just never going to be something I can memorize. Uh, like 16 digit account numbers was something that was really hard for me when I worked in the credit and debit card industry for a very long time. I kind of knew my own, but from there it was a crapshoot. And sometimes I needed to know some things like that. Um, 16 digits is really hard to remember. I can do four and I can do six and I can maybe do eight or 10, but more than that is a lot. So be thinking about instead of providing information that people are required to memorize, instead, let's give them opportunity for space 
space and repetitive practice so that it becomes something that they just know versus having to recall the where they were the day they learned this thing and tie the memory to a smell or some you know memorizing is hard for many people i'm gonna look at the weighing in thanks diane i i before e yep that's a big one um and basically I'm, until you drill exactly give them space and repetitive practice it it, it just got to be done and this conversation today is really about what people need versus what other people think those people over there need. I don't know if you've ever had that experience in your work life, some of you. Um, and we work with subject matter experts, some of us every day, all day, or often during a week. Um, and they give us the really good knowledge base and they give us all the information we need, the thorough information. But I'm talking about those fingertip type references, what the people need at the point of need. So um, just kind of making a distinction between the two. And how do we find out what people need again? Do type that in the chat for me, please. Yeah, Melody says, SMEs can be very excited about what they want to say without coming from the perspective of what the learner needs to know, do, or believe. Exactly. And we want their input. Do not hear that I don't want my SMEs uh, input, I because I do. But the difference is a full e-learning course requires a whole other sets of conversations and providing information that might be um, unfold slowly across time or multiple courses or it isn't quite ready but yet the people have been um, thrown into the deep end of the proverbial pool and need to use something um, and meanwhile over on the other side of the instructional design team the course isn't finished so you know it's going to look different in your environment what people need but let's think about that um, and i love janet that you're responding to melody do more of that guys out there it's really great it's a way of talking to each other um also we need to ask them what they need to close gaps and this might be as much for the people that are on the job already as new people coming in it's both and depending on your role and what you're building things for uh, but closing gaps, it might be gaps in knowledge. People went to a, a training of new things, um, a new product rollout, and they needed to know all the parts and pieces and how the on off switch works, whatever the things are. And you brought them in um, to a big Zoom room or um, back in the day, we would gather in a classroom and talk about all those things. But that was three months before the product actually rolled out. Now it's three months later and that sucker is out there in the world and people are using it. And now my, besides it being real life and real information, I might need to know other things. Um, but also I might've forgotten in three months some key things. So that would be closing my gap in knowledge. It might be closing my gap in skill. Um, maybe three months earlier, we did a training or even a month, six weeks ahead, we did a training on a computer component that wasn't live yet. And it gets to the day that it's live and maybe the job aid um, that comes out is reminding people how to access the system or process um, because we did a just pretend earlier on. Job aids I love are subway and train maps. This is my little representation of that. I truly, truly love them. They're color coded. They have label graphic, the whole thing about them, love them. They're simple. They don't try to draw the, the way the road or the track actually goes. They draw it in a straight line and show you the steps in between. I think they're excellent job aids. Um, and to the point, I like to see what the end goal is, and then I can work backward from there to figure out what the intermediate stops are. And I can make an assessment for myself as to how those intermediate stops affect me. 
I'm on the subway or the train in Chicago, um, I can count how many stops there are until I find the, get to the stop that I need to get off from. I can plan. And the same is true of performance support tools and job aids. Um, don't err on the side of giving them too much information, but also don't err on the side of not telling them what the, the end goal is, what success looks like, in other words. Figure that out and then work backward from there as you're building. And then guide them along the way. So just like in the map in the previous slide, I can count how many stops I need. Be thinking about that. Maybe it's one overall job aid, but then there might be sub job aids based on um, particular and unique tasks um, for a certain group within your organization. Um, there might be three different groups that handle different things. They need all the main information, but then they have very specific things assigned to them. They're going to need a job aid for those uh, two. And that doesn't need to be in the one overall. Think about how you break things down. Again, what do they need to close gaps and to be successful? Come on, there we go. Okay, moving on to a little bit of how. I've been giving you a few tips along the way, but um, I'd love for you to do a check-in with me. Am I making sense? Have I given you anything new to think about or stop talking? I've heard all this before. Love to know. Give me an emoji if you want to. Thanks for that, Diane. So the first thing I want to reinforce that I said a little while ago is that it needs to be part of the overall design plan. How it needs to be part of the learning strategy. Don't just jump to um, the way we always do things is to build an e-learning course because that's what happens in organizations. Uh, we're very comfortable with that, especially now that we're remote. Uh, many people that weren't remote before um, plan for it and. I want you to think in the broader terms of performance support instead of just job aid in this, um, especially applicable to the part one overall design plan. Um, performance support looks like many things besides um, a quick reference guide or QA, uh, Q and A. We we scaled out a bunch of them earlier. Do scroll back up and see the list because it's a good one and a robust one. Um, but the other piece of this is it also has, performance support also has to do with reinforcement. It has to do with um, how they're supervised or managed, how they're supported by um, peers on the job or supervisors on the job. Performance support looks like lots of things. It isn't just one thing. It's a more, it's part of the learning plan. If, if our goal is to provide tools that make people successful, we need to think about the various tools that will help get the people there and about the journey on the way. Uh, it's never an afterthought. I don't, you, it, it can sometimes turn into an afterthought once we know something's going on that we couldn't anticipate. System rollouts are my past. Those happened a lot. We usually had to do just in time um, performance support tools, but you get the idea. Um, I said a minute ago, I forgot it was in here, the way the learners will be supported. So ideas for that is, I think, um, how people will be coached, I would not leave that up to chance because, again, we're designing solutions that help people be successful. And if we don't engage with the supervisory and management staff and give them tools to be successful too, then we're not doing everything to make the staff that are most affected um, by these changes or new things um, we, we're putting barriers to their success out there. And it's not an innate skill. Coaching is not an innate skill. You can quote me. I've been saying this for years. Um, so how they'll be coached, are you going to give their leader um, a checklist? Um, are you going to advise them that they should do a check-in with their people at five days and 15 days and three months? Whatever makes sense for the project that you're working on and the content is what you need to do. Again, not a mistake or don't leave it to chance. I don't know why I have this 
fade in, I just do. So objective um, observation worksheets, if they're learning how to perform several new tasks, observation might be a key way to know, is the training content I'm built for them even relevant based on how they do things on the job? Has it changed over time? Um, peer mentoring and job shadowing can be a really excellent training uh, and learning methodology. It can also break people. So again, back to when I say control the conversation, this is one way that you can do that and do it really well. Um, and I think that at the design meetings with the subject matter experts and with a, you know, the key stakeholder where the project probably initiated, it might be um, beneficial to think about does this even align with the job expectations and the job descriptions these people um, are working under? Because that matters too. Uh, this is the biggest miss in computer training, um, as far as I can tell ever, is that we're not very good about telling them what to do when things go wrong. And back in the day, at the beginning of the internet, yep, really, I'm that old. We always had a webmaster, a way to contact a webmaster. So if something was broken or inaccurate or needed a spell, a spelling error, whatever it was, we had a way to contact somebody. I don't know that they ever did, but there was a way. I think we forget to do this in our e-learning courses and um, building them into whatever materials accompany the e-learning. Uh, who to contact for what? If this happens then, um, where to contact them? Is it email? Is it phone? It, it, all of those things. And if you have names, if your organization is such that names work for this, um, fine. Otherwise, you know, build a new email, internal email address, whatever you have to do. I cannot stress strongly enough curating user feedback um, and doing something with it matters. We get better at our work when we do that. But also, there might be strong iteration that needs to happen sooner than this schedule. Frictionless and barrier-free access, again, <laughs> it's hard to do this when they can't get to what they need to, whether it's getting into um, the learning management system to complete courses. I'm sure some of you work for large organizations and have horror memories about how hard this was. I'm hoping in today's day and age, everything is single sign-on, but I'm also um, not deluded. So I will remind you to think about this when you're building things, make it all as easy as possible to get to. Seamless, streamlined, concise, succinct, and brief. Consider this uh, your green plan. It's a renewable resource. Plan to iterate. Plan to iterate out as far as you need to till everybody that's learning the new thing uh, will be successful in their work. Um, it's too easy to create a course and put it on the learning management system, which I um, tongue-in-cheek refer to the place where courses go to die. Uh, LMS providers hate hearing that from me. They are many who have. Um, and that, but plan to iterate those courses too. Put that on your schedule. At least annually visit that list. Visit courses. Are they still relevant? Do they still contain relevant information? Been saying all that. You'll want to give them a communication strategy, keeping things current. couple ideas for how to do this. The first note is it doesn't have to be fancy to be effective. A paper worksheet is better than nothing. Post-it notes are better than nothing. It doesn't need to be fancy. If there's a work, a consistent workplace injury that's happening to one or more people, let's get them something. It might be a phone video of how to turn the machine on or turn the machine off as quick. And it doesn't even have to be narrated. And by not having narration, there aren't 16 people that need to weigh in on the wording and all of that stuff. Um, yeah, pre-printed post-it notes. We should all think more about doing that. I love that idea. Um, give them a phone video to give them something quickly. You can send it by email. It's 30 seconds or a minute. 
Um, and then you can also be planning on how to mitigate this on a broader scale. But um, while thinking about something as dire as workplace injury, this is when things like this are needed the most. So be thinking about urgent and emergent. These are all the types of app, uh, apps that I think about that we're using on a regular basis, which are all just job aids, behavior modification, educational, emotional health, various healthcare things um, for all kinds of healthcare things that you used to have to go to a clinic for, meditation, stress reduction, weight loss. Um, those are job aids. People are accustomed to using them. So why wouldn't we think about making apps instead of courses. Just a thought. Uh, chatbots and AI, um, which is how strangely things that you say out uh, loud in your house, I swear to God, somebody is listening. And then I get served up advertising. It happened to me this morning about something. Um, it isn't really the listening, but they do, you know, my, this is a Google house. So the Google knows <laughs> when I've gone searching for things. Um, you have the ability, and these are fairly inexpensive, you could build reminders and have them sent out um, through these devices. One is Alexa or Google Home. There's several of them now. Uh, AR, augmented reality at the point of need. When I was working in healthcare, I was... Um, dreaming of the day that I could build new employee orientation um, for what was, you know, pretty life-changing, life-altering kind of stuff um, it, it, using augmented reality because it could see so much potential for fostering emotion and fostering empathy um, and giving people visual cues and visual instruction try before they did it wrong on their job with real residents. I could just see so much benefit. It was in its infancy then, um, and it still is, but AR doesn't need to be expensive or difficult to create anymore. So if you've been thinking about that, um, there are plenty of good apps right out there right now where you can download a uh, AR app on your phone and start testing it out on products in the grocery store to just see kind of how it works and think about how you might build that in. Curation sites, wikis. Um, I like the, um, the, the web and book and so forth, the site called Listly, L-I-S-T dot L-Y for curating websites and putting them in categories. I mentioned at the beginning, if you were here, I like Google Keep. Um, ways of curating instead of trying to carry all this knowledge around in our heads and thinking we're actually going to remember it. Um, we have these great tools out there for us to use. And so um, provide this type of environment for your learners. It could be sharing best practices for them. Again, that's a way of curating and it could be in a wiki form format doesn't have to be, although I think being able to categorize and cross-link um, by types of things um, matters to people that are, again, they're using a new process, they're using a new tool, they're using a new system, whatever the thing is, it would be nice to click to the best practices shared by category. So however you do it, curating best practices is genius way and having somebody moderate it just because somebody might share a best practice tip that isn't actually in alignment with how you want to do things, then you can also mitigate, um, you know, through a robust dialogue or <laughs> depending on the level, or you can just go to that person and redirect and correct what's wrong so that they don't get hurt at work or, you know, make the mistake of doing a fatal error, whatever the thing might be. Yeah, binders. Who doesn't love binders? I, I'll admit to owning some still. Succinct. Yes, Sarah. Yeah, these should not be tomes. They should be just what they need, just at the time. Oh, air wine labels. I haven't done that. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that now. <laughs> 
uh, SMS or push notifications. So it could be text messages if you have um, an environment and internal culture um, that allows for you to text message your people. But if not, short reminders sent on the company uh, intranet or via email. Um, and they know when to expect them Tuesday morning at nine, whatever it is, or there's a tip of the day provided on the homepage, whatever it is. But there's lots of ways to give people tidbits of um, best ideas and tips. Don't forget that this technology, though it's been around a long time, is still really effective. And we all have our phones in our hands like all the time. So don't forget. If you want to take a screen grab of this, these are three real QR codes. I cannot, I could do a whole hour, I'm pretty sure, talking about how much I think QR codes are the unsung heroes of our world. I dreamed of a day back when I was in healthcare of having QR codes lovingly and inconspicuously placed in such places as the supply closets, the resident laundry areas, and places like that. And then the QR codes would pop up um, sets of brief instructions, could be by resident. Um, there are special instructions. The supply closet, no one ever knew how to put this stuff away. It could have been a little video on their phone. And I should pre uh, set up here that those are all good ideas. I also, we had rules where they weren't, when they were on the resident floor, they weren't supposed to have their cell phones out and available and all the things because we didn't believe in that in quotes. Uh, and yet the employees always had their phones with them anyway. So why not use the phones for good instead of something else was my theory. So um, I cannot, and QR codes, you can make a couple of them for free on the internet, the interwebs, um, but you can also subscribe to services and um, for little money, you can color code them, you can put, um, words or pictures or icons to make them even more visually identifiable. Um, and I just cannot speak strongly enough about how much QR codes and barcodes could be effective in this world of performance support. Um, the three QR codes, one is a link to my website, one is a link to an interview I did about um, the course I built for TechSmith that's out in their academy. And the third one is um, this thing. When TechSmith asked me to build a, a course on job aids, I said, well, I can hardly build a course on job aids without providing a job aid. Um, so that bit.ly link or the QR code on the previous slide will take you to the Google Sheet um, where the sample is that I built. Um, and you can download a copy and make it your own. And all it's intended to do is list the types of learning content that you're going to work with. Uh, whether it's robust projects or small, it doesn't matter. Anything that you might interface with if you're in the instructional design department or the training department. And then across the top is um, things that you have access to at your organization. And so I'm trying to get you to think about this is something more than just building a course or a class. So um, you can change this list or you can use this list and then just put X's or um, check marks in the columns and rows based on um, thinking about what's possible, thinking of out of the proverbial box, for instance. Um, step action tables are something I was making a long time ago in my work and I still believe that they have value today. Uh, what do I mean by that? It's a number list. Um, the, in the next column to the right would be um, the name of the step or just a brief sentence or phrase of what to do. And then another column might give um, cross-reference to uh, other places they need to go or codes they need, et cetera. So it goes from the simplest to the more complex information, for instance, it's on the list. So um, that's one of my fabulous prizes for you. Uh, those of you that stay till the end, I will give you just a little bit more. In a minute. Um, a word about using video. I think, oh, you're welcome. I'm glad you appreciate it. Um, so a word about using video. I think um, phone, a quick phone video, of, you, you carry one of the best cameras in your hand, in your iPhone or your Android. Um, 
And there's no reason not to use those for quick offs and um, to get it right at the point of need. Um, I think they're very usable then to take them and explode out the information for a video that's going to be part of a course or an interview or whatever. Um, I don't think the only way to get or the most effective way overall for performance support is video in and of itself. I think that it has to have some thought put behind it. So I don't think it's a bad idea, but I think you have to think about why you're using it and is that the most effective thing for the learners? Sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes the answer is no. You know your content, so make those decisions accordingly. The reason I say that I'll just add is because you can't interact with video in quite the same way that you can um, some other content and that might be necessary. I realize there's interactive video, you know what I'm saying though. Um, I mentioned about the TechSmith Academy. If you don't use TechSmith products right now, um, I I'm sad for you that you don't have Snag It because I use it every day um, and I make no money. I don't work for TechSmith. So, but I, I do have this course. Um, you can join TechSmith, um, their blog in their academy for free. And um, they have this academy that's been building for a little over a year. Several of us have put courses out there. Um, this uh, bit.ly link or this QR code, if you don't have a login, it'll take you to give them your email address and password. I feel like if you work with video and if you work with some of these other things, since it's free, it's um, it's a low lift for giving them your email address. I can't stress strongly enough how much I believe in them and their products. They're a great company to work with. Okay, we've reached the point where I'm going to ask you uh, something you're taking away, thinking about doing differently, and then I'm going to post a link in the chat as well. So tell me a uh, one of your key takeaways. Or give me an emoji, give me, give me liberty, or give me death. So the bonus um, for those of you that stay till the end, isn't this mean? Uh, it's mostly because I didn't build it in the presentation, um, but also for being here on, uh, on purpose and uh, in person, I just feel like it might be nice to have a little bonus. So this takes you to a hidden um, page on my website and the tools I built for um, the DevLearn Conference and the Learning Solutions Conference last year um, are out there for you, as well as, a book, um, an ebook by New Spring. I was a contributor to it, but it has to do with um, engaging learners. So I thought you might be interested. And then that selection tool I showed you is linked here as well. So a uh, plethora of solutions that can either supplement or replace e-learning courses. Oh, good. Janet, tell me one, if you would, please. I like the idea of making a short video with cell phone. Great. I'm glad I reminded you to do that. Sneaky link. Yeah, I'm good at those, Diane. And it's my site doesn't have any lead generators on it because I had one that I didn't like and da da da. Um, Sarah says, I'm going to push this. Job aids must be succinct. Need to get my bullet points together so I can easily persuade the departments I work with. Yep. Also, that job aids, even multiple job aids, might be more useful than an e learning course. And, you know, back in the day, we only had paper and photocopying, and now we can. Um, we can link to other things, even if it ends up being a PDF, um, a digital PDF, we can still link out. It's still paper, but it's digital paper. Uh, Joe Harless, inside everything fat, every fat e-learning course is a thin job <laughs> trying to get out. I haven't heard that before. That's awesome. It's kind of like this, this meeting could have been an email. <laughs> It's the same idea. And that's why I say we're not replacing courses, but the course should be the full um, depth and breadth of the knowledge that people need. Um, and they need to know about, they need to know the genesis maybe and what the ultimate goals are. But sometimes they just need to know what they need to do right now in this minute um, in um, for the next 30 seconds type of mindset. So it really is a both and. Um, but I also know that e-learning courses, the more robust the projects and the more robust um, the time frame, uh, the long and the more people that are involved, the longer it takes to actualize those courses or training classes, same, same. Um, and 
often we need to get them something sooner. So that's, that's why I started becoming the person with a tiny little drum about job aids and performance support. Um, and don't forget those supervisors and line managers and those people that are supervising um, because we need to give them tools as well. And I think that's really easy to forget. Um, and in the scheme of, I want everybody to be successful, I'm gonna make sure that they don't break their people, that we give them tools that they need. And you might work with them on developing them. It doesn't have to be done in a vacuum. Uh, Lisa, five minutes early. Oh my gosh, your timing, it was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody has any questions, let me go ahead and um, I'm going to progress the slide real quick. If anyone has any questions for Dawn, please, now's your time, go ahead and submit them in the chat panel. Um, and we'd be happy to spend the remaining time to to address them. And we've had some great dialogue going over going on over in that chat panel. And Don, if you want to take a, a minute to just scroll through your chat panel to see if there were any questions maybe that got sent to you directly or if there was anything that um, we missed during the webinar itself. I have been keeping track. I don't think I missed any, but I will do that. Um, I forgot to display the um, my contact info slide, at least if you want to do that at your end if that's easy to do. I don't know if it is. So yeah, yeah. here okay. um, Dawn's been kind enough to list her handles, link, LinkedIn, and um, all the things Facebook. or most of the things. Um, is there something you want me to go back to anybody? Or I know I went past a few of those slides kind of quickly, um, but I'm happy to go back or revisit something that was unclear. What or questions or go about your day and have a good rest of it. And I've left my email address here. So if anybody has any questions or thinks of one later on, feel free to reach out and I'd be happy to forward it on to Dawn to get you an answer. Again, a recording link of this webinar will be sent out in the next few days. So keep an eye out um, in your inbox for that. Lots of thank say, yous coming in. Okay. Um, I want to say thank you to all of you for being here. I want to say thank you to the folks that are uh, watching the video recording. Um, the same offer goes out to you um, to reach out if you need to. And um, hopefully this was helpful. I hope it was. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Dawn, for all the information you've shared with us and taking time out of your schedule. Um, thank you, everybody, for being so um, interactive and engaging with us in the chat panel. Um, there were some great comments and feedback and everything being shared over there. Um, hopefully you saw some courses or um, offerings that you might consider adding to your portfolio. Again, spring enrollment is currently open, and then we do have that portfolio class that is in its first week that is still open for enrollment right now if you're interested in joining. Um, this slide has my contact info, so again, if you think of anything later on, feel free to send it our way. Um, thank you, Dawn. It was a pleasure having you present for us today, and I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of the day. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.